Hey, Betsy. Welcome back to the Rocky Retirement Show. There is so much stuff that has gone on since we last spoke. So I'm going to talk about myself for a little bit if you are game for that. Yeah, I definitely want to hear about all your exciting travels. Oh, my gosh. So it has just been crazy, crazy, crazy. So, um, And for the listeners, I usually don't talk about myself a lot because I am not fully retired, but I have been backing off on work. You know, I started this show back in 2016 because I was trying to figure out if I would be able to retire and not go cray cray. And so far, I've just kind of changed the way I do things a little bit to to create some more space in my life. But um, Betsy and I were talking a little bit before the show and we said, hey, wait, maybe the listeners would like an update on what's been happening with me. So in, I think it was April or May, um, and this show is evergreen, so we usually don't like to talk about dates, but several, many months ago, I went on a trip to Ireland. And in that trip, my cell phone did not work. And my husband's cell phone did. And my phone is is newer than his. So it really made me mad that my phone didn't work. And so when I got back, I switched cell phone providers and so, and if you're interested in who the cell phone provider is, go to the show notes and I'll, I'll give you a little blurb and I'll, I'll give you a little link. But, um, I used to be with Google Fi and Google Fi was not working and they never got it to work the whole time I was there. And one of the reasons I got Google Fi is because it works internationally and it never worked. And I was on chat with them and they just never had it. And then when I got back to the U.S., they said, oh, we can't fix it now because now you're in the U.S. And I had just had it. I was oh, like, okay, oh no. well, that is not acceptable. So I I went online and and signed up for, I, I, I purchased a new phone. And so I had another phone co- come in. I wasn't sure if it was the phone or, or what. But um, so now I had two phones. And so I signed up with another organization that also piggybacks on other phone lines and took it with me to my next trip, which was in Greece. Now, let me tell you about the Greece trip. It was a a cruise. It's the sister, it's the auntie cruise where my sister and I take our nieces and nephews on a week long trip when they graduate from high school. And this niece lives in Germany. And so we kind of changed up the rules a little bit and told her that instead of if she wanted to instead of coming to the US for a week we would take her on a a one week cruise in Europe auntie's choice like we're not going to pick the most expensive cruise right so so she chose that option and so we did a Greece tr- uh, cruise we got a really good deal on it cuz i purchased it a, a year ago and so we got a junior suite for basically the price of a balcony. And Betsy, I'm so glad we had that extra space because can you imagine three women in a tiny little regular cruise? I mean, I'm so glad that we had that space. Especially my sister and my niece are very modest. And we had this humongous closet that you could go in to the closet, shut the door and get changed. Like there was plenty, like you could have put a small bed in there. And um, now I'm not as modest, like when there's other ladies there, you know, I'm a swimmer. So we're just, you know, I'm not as modest as them. So I never used the closet to get dressed, but they did. And so anyway, the thing that happened on that cruise, it just seems like it's one thing after another when I travel these days, my bags never made it. Uh And I know, and I am not a light packer. And so this time I thought, well, rather than taking a whole bunch of stuff in my carry-on, I'm just going to put everything in the main bag and not really have that much in my carry-on. And my sister said, you at least want to change a clothes in there. And I said, okay. I didn't, I didn't put an entire change of clothes. I thought, I'll just take a couple of shirts. Betsy, that was a mistake because yeah. I, my travel outfit are black pants and a black shirt just because it covers anything if if any well I was in Greece in uh June and it's quite hot there (laughs) yeah (laughs) 
and not having a pair of shorts. I didn't even have a bathing suit. I had nothing. And before the trip, I had purchased a tile. Do you know what that is? That's a little device that lets you know where your bags are. Oh, like, yeah, an air tag. Like an Apple tag, but this Mm -hmm. is an Android. And so I had purchased these tiles. And so I knew when I got into Amsterdam, where was I? I think it was Amsterdam. I I don't remember where my connecting flight was. When I got there, I knew that my bags were still in Atlanta. And so I notified the the person and she said, well, we can't do anything about it here. You're going to have to wait. And I said, you can't even like, have them start the process of getting it to Bologna? No, no, we can't do anything. So I got to Bologna. I headed straight for the lost bags. And the lady said, well, go to the the turntable thing. And I said, here's my tile or here's my phone. My bags are in Atlanta. Can you please start the process? Because I am leaving tomorrow to get on a cruise. Betsy, she looked at me and she said, well, you might not want to get on that ship. And I said, I am getting on the ship. That is the whole reason I'm here. Right? <laughs> yeah. And so she filled out the form and whatever. And so I had, um, you know, I got on the ship. They never came. They said, okay, we're going to take it. We're going to bring it to your hotel room tomorrow. And I said, I am leaving at 11 o'clock to get on the ship make sure it's here before then. And they said, okay. Well, they weren't there. I waited until noon and I said, I'm leaving. I'm getting on the ship. So my sister and my niece, we all got on the ship. And then at 530, which was after we had sailed, they sent me a a mess, like a text or an email or something and said, we noticed that you're not at your hotel. Where do you want us to send the bag? And I said, well, here's my itinerary. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Please get me my bag at the next stop. And then I talked to my my room attendant, and I don't even know why I mentioned it to him. Maybe he noticed that I didn't have a bag. I don't I don't know what it was. And I said, "Yeah, my bag never made it." And he said, "You need to go to the guest services or whatever they call it on ship. You need to go down to the fifth floor and talk with them and let them know because they'll help you get your bag." And I said, "Really? I didn't know that they would do that." Betsy, they were so nice. They, they were amazing. And they, they said, you're not going to get your bag until you're in Athens. And Athens was halfway through the trip. And I'm like, really? I'm not going to have a bag until I get to Athens. Well, Athens came and went. (laughs) I never got my bag. And they were calling. They were emailing. I was calling. I was emailing. Nothing. They never answered. Never. Nothing, you know. And let me tell you, uh, they make great cars in Italy, but the customer service has a lot to be desired is all <laughs> I'm going to say. You know, I mean, cars and clothes, great made in Italy, but personal services, you know, like not ever answering the phone or answering an email, that was a little bit unacceptable when I did not have my bag the whole time. So the ship gave me some, I was running out of toothpaste. I was running out of stuff, you know, cause I only had my carry on with just a small amount of things. Um, I did have three pair of underwear, which I'm eternally grateful for. I always <laughs> yeah. carry underwear in my carry on just because one time my husband, and I got stuck in Dallas and we had nothing. We had no clothes, nothing. And we were all sweaty and it was just like really gross. And the air and the hotel that the airline put us up in when we got stuck in Dallas uh, sent us to it was a Marriott brand and Marriott brands always have like toothpaste they have toothbrush nothing they said they had run out uh-huh. so I didn't have toothpaste I didn't have a toothbrush so I learned my lesson I always carry that stuff with me now and a few pair of underwear just just in case so. Halfway through the trip, I still didn't have my bag. So the um, I'm going to give a shout out to Royal Caribbean. They were just amazing. They gave me a couple of t-shirts. They, you know, they gave me free, um, because what happened was they said, well, we'll give you some free dry cleaning, some free washing. And I said, I will have to go naked if you give me that because (laughs) I have nothing to wear. (laughs) I mean. I didn't even have a bathing suit. I had nothing. So 
So I bought a skirt and then they gave me some t-shirts and then I could change things up a little bit, you know, so that was, that was pretty fun. And um, so, yeah, so that was my Greek trip. And then at the end of the trip, it was after we, so it wasn't actually the, it was towards the end. It was after Athens. I got food poisoning on the ship and a bunch of us did. And they tried to pass it off as the norovirus uh, because there were so many people that were sick and they had the barf bags at every, um, at every stairwell, which they do if there's a lot of turbulence on the ship. But there, I mean, we were smooth sailing. There was no, they were there because so many of us got sick. And people, I had talked to people that never went to the ship doctor because they were afraid they were going to be quarantined or, you know, whatever. But I'm like, I have had food poisoning many times and I know exactly what food poisoning is on me. It's exactly six hours after I eat. And it was the buffet. And there was another lady at our table because we were sharing a table with three other people. So there were, it was a six person table and she was allergic to peanuts, like really allergic to peanuts. And so every day she had to look at the menu for the following day and they had to prepare her food separately so that she could eat. And she had gone into the buffet the, the same day I did. And all she ate was all the only thing that she ate that, that matched what I ate were rolls and butter. So it was either the rolls or the butter that everybody in the ship, I think that they probably made rolls on something that had chicken juice on it or something. I don't know, but I was really sick. And um, so Royal Caribbean gave me a two day future cruise credit, you know, which was kind of, it was, it was cool. But like I said, they tried to pass it off as Nolo virus. They were telling everybody to wash their hands. And every time they said that, I'm like, how about the kitchen staff wash their hands? They're the ones that did this, you know, they had no, um, like they didn't take any responsibility except for they did pay. And anyone who went to the doctor got it for free. And by the way, I had no mention of being quarantined. And, and here's the thing, my sister and my niece did not get sick and they would have gotten sick if it was normal. I mean, there was just, So, uh, I was really sick. I had wanted an IV and they gave me the tiniest IV ever. It wasn't a real IV. It was just to administer the anti-nausea medicine. It was no, um, no liquid basically. It was, it was like a four inch by four inch square. But so that was the Greece trip. And then, um, my husband and I went on another cruise in August and that cruise was really fun. We we had our feet. We had the fish that eat the scales on your feet. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. I've heard of that. I would like to try that sometime. So that was obviously wasn't on the cruise. That was in the Caribbean. And that's the, it was so ticklish. I couldn't, I had such a hard time with it because it was so ticklish. And my husband was fine. And honestly, we did it because he was having trouble walking. And and I was like, well, why don't you get your feet done? Why don't we? And then when I saw the fish eating, the feet eating fish, I said, let's just do this and see if it helps. And it did. It helped him. It, you know, it, it helped him walk better after that was done. So I'm glad that we did it. But, you know, I probably won't do it again. I, I'm just way too ticklish for that. And, um, you know, it's illegal in the United States because in the United States, if they if they do something like that, they have to throw away the utensils. Well, you can't throw away fish. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's illegal here. But anyway, on that cruise, on the, um, the Caribbean cruise, the day before the last day, so basically it was the last night, I was so sick. Hmm. I was th- throwing up and I just stayed in my room and my husband got sick too. And when we came home, I thought it was the flu. You know, I'm like, I've had COVID before and it did not feel like this at all. But we came home, my husband made me get, he made me test and we both had COVID. And um, the funny thing is, is that I am not, I'm not really 
pleased with the cleanliness of the other guests on board these ships. You know, you see things that you wish you don't see, like like on the ship, just a just one and and this was actually a staffing problem. You're not supposed to fill your water bottles up under the spigot, right? You're supposed uh-huh. to fill up a cup and then use the cup to fill up your water bottle. And that's what I do over and over again. I use a cup, I fill up the cup, and then I pour the water into my water bottle. Well, they, like during meals, they kind of block off the water spigots and the staff fills up all these waters. Well, you come in and if there's no water, you, you say, can I have a water, please? The staff twice asked me for my water bottle so that they would fill it up under the spigot. And I'm like, I don't think they understand the concept. It's not that the guests can't do it. It's nobody should do that. Yeah. Nobody should fill their water bottle up under the spigot. Everybody should fill up a glass and pour it in. And I know the listeners are probably thinking that I'm a germaphobe, but that is how we spread germs. And that is one of the reasons I got COVID because I didn't have it before I got on the ship. (laughs) Yeah. You would think people would learn these things after a few years of COVID, but. You would think. And Betsy, I don't want to be any kind of sick. Not washing your hands. Yes. I don't want to have the flu. I don't want to have the norovirus. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be, have a cold. I don't want to be sick. I don't care if it's COVID or not. But um, but yeah, so that's my last three trips. <laughs> it has been one thing or another happens. But you know what, Petsy? I had fun on all three of these trips. Yeah. So I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't not go. I just, I love to travel so much. And I love it more than my husband does. But for the listeners, here's a couple of things to think about. Number one, you can travel without cell service, okay? You're not going to die if you don't have a phone for a week. We've all gone, remember when we were in our 20s, none of us had phones, okay? Number two, yes, you can get sick on a cruise. Uh, Or actually, the second thing is not about getting sick. It's about you can not have a bag. And still have fun. It doesn't have to ruin your vacation. I still had a great vacation without the bag. And by the way, the airline reimbursed me. I spent about $300 because I had to buy some clothes. And I had to buy like toothpaste and stuff like that. And the airline, now it's a European airline, KLM. So I don't know if, you know, Delta or American Airlines would have reimbursed me. But I got reimbursed everything that I spent. And I didn't spend a lot. I probably could have spent more because it was seven days and I only spent 300, but I did get reimbursed. Um, And then the second thing is, even if you do get sick, now, thank goodness, I got sick at the end of both of these trips, but it didn't ruin my vacation. I still have those good memories of being able to go. I probably would have a different opinion if I got sick on the first day of both of these trips, but both of them, I was sick at the end. (laughs) So, you know, and when I say sick, I'm including the food poisoning because, um, yeah, that was, (laughs) that was not a good situation, but at least it only lasted one day, you know, the food poisoning. Do you think that now you can become a much lighter traveler? I've been watching some YouTube videos about people who pack like super light, like just bring, something not much bigger than a tote bag on a seven day trip. And it's kind of inspiring. Like the way they do their wardrobes, like, you know, plan it out carefully and buy fabric that rolls tightly and that sort of thing. I'm going to Italy in a few weeks and, and I'm trying to convince my husband that we should both only take carry on and and try to travel a little lighter this time. Well, I I could if I needed to. Like I'm going on a trip as soon as we are done with this um, podcast. I'm leaving. I'm going to go on a five hour drive with my girlfriend. I think this is the first girl trip that I've taken since I've been married, and I've been married 15 years. Oh wow! We are driving about five hours to see a friend of ours, another synchronized swimmer that moved a couple of years ago, and we haven't seen her in two years. So we're going to go see her. So I am tr- bringing just like a small ish 
bag. I'm not bringing my giant, I'm, I'm, my girlfriend would just freak out if I brought like a regular sized bag. But one of the reasons why I don't travel light is because I bring a pillow. I bring a pillow in my, um, my big bag or my, like I'm, I'm shoving it into my overnight bag, but I'm not comfortable on the pillows that, you know, I have like an ergonomic side sleeping pillow Mm -hmm. that helps me sleep. Um, I could probably do without it for a day, but I don't think I could do without it for a week. I mean, I had a hard time on the cruise without that pillow and, um, sort of halfway through my room attendant said, because because the pillows are too fluffy, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it hurts my neck. And so halfway through, he said, you know, I was saying, you know, about the pillow and I was going to roll up a towel and sleep on that. And he says, do you want me to bring you some feather pillows? And I was like, well, I'll try it. I don't think it'll help. It helped so much having like a flatter pillow. So I guess I could try it, but I don't think I'm going to, especially if I'm doing a trip where I'm not going to get on a, on a plane. Like if I am driving to a cruise that gets off like in Miami or somewhere like that, I'm going to, I'm going to take my big bag, but I will think twice if I have to get on a plane and I'm going to bring like a full set of clothes on my carry on. So Betsy, I understand what you're saying about traveling light and I've seen the same things. I just don't think I'm going to do it. (laughs) I think, and you might have to check with the airlines, but I think I saw something about that you can actually bring a pillow on your flight without it counting as an extra personal item or something. And some people actually were doing a trick where they were taking the pillow on the Stuffing it full of stuff. And then stuffing it full of extra clothes and stuff. Yeah. I've seen that too. I don't know. I just... Don't want my pillow to get all dirty. You know how many people are on those seats before you? I don't know. I just, yeah, Yeah. I don't, I mean, yes, I do know you can do that. You Now the listeners are all going to think I'm a total germaphobe and I'm not, but the pillow is on your face. I mean, I'm a side sleeper. So the pillow, like I, I am putting my face on the pillow. It's not just the back of my neck, but so yes, but yes, I know you can do that. And I've seen the videos where they stuff the thing full of their clothes and they say it's a pillow. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Betsy, you know, I like to five f- first class, right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I didn't have a bag. And and that's another thing. The only reason why the airline even would talk to me about maybe getting me my bag was because I had a business class ticket. The ship said that if I had a regular ticket, they would, they probably wouldn't even be talking to me. So Uh-oh. whatever. But yes, I do like, to, I do, I, I, st- one of the reasons I still work is because I like, I like to upgrade my flight. I know it's only a couple of hours. Like my husband hates it. He's like, oh, you're paying extra money for this six hour flight. And I'm like, yeah, but I make enough money to be able to do that. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing with you is you work for yourself. So if you want to work a little bit less and take a little longer vacations for travel and things like that, and also working for yourself, you don't have to endure like those long meetings that are kind of about nothing, the the things in the corporate world that people just get really tired of. I get um, it. So, I mean, for me, I, I think one of the greatest pluses about retirement is just the liberation of nobody dictating my time or creating my calendar, just I'm the one who does that. Um, and you working for yourself, I think you you don't have to escape that by retiring. If you still enjoy work, then, you know, work as much as it makes you happy as long as you can get in the time to do the things you want to do. Exactly. And yeah. that's what I did a couple of years ago. I started blocking out time for art club and I'm not doing as much art as I want to, but block, just blocking out time to do fun things and not just catch up on work things. And so, so yeah, I do enjoy that. Okay. Now enough about yeah. me. Yeah. Tell me what's going on with you. Cause it's been a little while since you and I have spoken. Yeah. What's going on? Well, so basically, I've now completed my first summer as a retired person. Yay. I, I, 
I love it. I'm still kind of amazed that I'm actually retired and that I can pretty much do whatever I want on most days. Um, I do have kind of a hard time understanding people who retire and then say they're bored or wish they could go back to work. One woman I know said she missed getting dressed up and going to the office. I don't know. To me, I feel like there's other things you could get dressed up for if that's what you like, or if it's the socializing aspect of working, there's other things you can do to replace that. Or if it's the challenging of your brain, I, you know, I don't know. Now she I, lives in your town, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. But, but don't you have, you've, you've talked in the past about the, not the senior centers. Yeah. The senior centers that have so much going on near you, like free exercise and. Oh free, yeah. You know. Like the park district. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you've talked yeah. about like classes and stuff that you go uh -huh. to. Did you, did you mention any of that to her? Did you say, listen to my podcast and you'll see there's a bunch of things that you can, uh, that you can do to get dressed up for, to train your brain? Yeah, I I did tell her that. I don't know. I guess everybody is is to themselves, but for me I just I I don't really get it cuz I feel like there is so much I can do and I'm totally loving retirement and I think I'm in the honeymoon phase of it still. Um but for me I don't really feel like the honeymoon stage of it is actually going to end. <laughs> so that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's hard to believe summer is uh, pretty much almost over now. Um, it, it'll be fall weather soon. Um, I got outdoors a lot this summer. I really enjoyed taking water exercise classes at an outdoor pool. I enjoyed walking outside a lot, sitting outside to read. One of the books that I read this summer it was called Sam. It was by Allegra Goodman. And it was one of the books that was recommended by Jenna Bush Hager on the Today Show. You know, she she recommends various books. And, and I found that a lot of the ones that she recommends are, are good. This one was kind of a coming of age story about a young girl. Um, it begins when the character is just seven and then it explores her relationships with her parents and her thoughts as she's growing up. It makes you kind of think a lot. It's kind of tender and heartbreaking in some parts. Um, but I liked it a lot. And I always like books that kind of delve deeply into the characters. And it's nice to be retired and just to be able to have time to, to do more leisure reading. Um, Are you I, in not, any book clubs? No, I'm not in a, in a book club at the moment. I, I'd like to find one that, that, was was good for me. I was in a book club for a while with some friends where we were reading travel and adventure books, uh, but that it kind of fell apart just because it was hard to find a time that worked for everybody to meet. And then some people wanted to stray away from just reading the travel and adventure books. Um, I'm reading a kind of a very different type of book right now that's called the Life List. It's uh, it's called The Life List, Master Every Moment and Live an Audacious Life. And uh, it's by Kate Christie. She's a time management expert and she lost her life partner to cancer. And uh, she, after she turned 50, it just really hit her hard about kind of how short life is. So she decided to write this book about creating a life list and she, she created her own life list and started accomplishing things on it. So she talks about the subtle difference between a life list and a bucket list. And a life list is the things that you want to do while you're still young enough to enjoy it versus bucket list is what you want to do before you die. And it kind of helps to lay out a framework for your own life, um, like how to, how to create your own list. So I haven't really created my own life list yet, but I, I'm still reading the book and I'm, I'm thinking about it. Uh, one item that I think would definitely be on that list would be kind of an incredible multi-course Italian meal in a place with a really stunning view in Italy. So I think I yeah. should be able to accomplish that one. And in, in a few weeks when I go on my 
Italy trip. I'm really excited that will be about amazing. That. Yeah. Yes. How long is yeah. that trip going to be? It's just a couple of weeks because my husband does still work. Um, and oh, he's coming with you this time. Yeah. Yeah. He's coming. <laughs> yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, we are going to uh, Naples, Positano and Sorrento. And uh, um, I, I think it's nice just to pick a few places versus trying to like tackle an entire country especially if you don't have a ton of time. That way, I think we can really see all of those areas really well. Um, I've been watching this YouTube video for a while. It's called Nikki Positano. It's about this woman. She's British and she's married to an Italian man named Carlo. And they live in this quaint little house in Positano, Italy. And they have a beautiful garden and their house is like 500 steps from the road. I don't, have you been to Positano before on the Amalfi Coast? No. It's like uh -uh. way up. It's way up high on a hill. I think we're going to get a heck of a workout. Like, I don't know. Hopefully we're in shape enough. But that's why you need to do some of these travel trips while you're still young enough to be able to. Right. If you have to walk up 500 steps to get to your Airbnb or something. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, but the. The scenery in these Nikki Positano uh, YouTube videos of the area, um, just incredible scenery. She talks about what life is like. Um, it's also the wine time that we're going to be there when all the wine is going to be harvested. Are you going to um, get your feet wet? Uh, wet in, in, in the water? In, you know, stomp. No, stomping oh. grapes. Oh, I... Well, I don't know. If there's an opportunity, sure. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> you know how they do that? Fun. They go and they stomp grapes. Yes, that might be fun. Yeah, it would be. Um, definitely going to enjoy drinking wine and enjoy eating pizza in Naples, where great pizza was invented. I think we're going to find one of the very like authentic pizza places to have pizza there. And we're going to visit Pompeii. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, tomorrow, we're actually going to the Museum of Science and Industry to see there's a big exhibit about Pompeii there. So I think that'll get us kind of psyched up for our trip. And we'll learn a, a whole lot. How fun. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm excited. And I think it, it should be a good time of year where the weather will be a little bit more temperate and uh, the uh, tourists won't be quite as much all over the place. So it should be a, a, a great trip. Yeah. Now, is it just you and your husband or are there going to be other people there as well? No, it's just us. And we're, we're not doing a tour, but he didn't want to drive this time. He drove when we went to Ireland and it's a little bit scary on those twisty winding roads and everything. And after looking at what the roads look like in this part of Italy that we're visiting and how hard, par hard parking is in some of these places, we decided we'd take buses and cab it most of the time, but uh, we would hire a private driver just for a few days for like the longer days when we're transferring between one Airbnb and another. Um, so uh, next time we talk, I can let you know how, how that all works out. And it'll probably be fun to meet our driver and chat with them about life in Italy and stuff too. That would be fun. Have you, have you done any um, looking at private tours, like through Viator or anything like that? Uh, not really. Our, our driver that we hired is uh, getting us a private tour in Pompeii. Um, and then I think once we get over there, we'll figure out which is like the best tour to go on to to go on a boat out to the Isle of Capri, because that's another thing we, we really want to make sure that we do. How did you find the driver? Uh, searching online. And then, well, actually, I asked the Airbnb host of the Airbnb that we booked if she had any recommendations. And so I got prices from a few different places to find this one. Nice. And so that's, you're leaving in a couple of weeks or when are you, uh -huh. when are you going? 
Wonderful. Uh, yeah, in a few weeks. Yeah. Hmm. So is your husband uh, starting to get jealous yet of you not working and he still has to work for a couple more years? I, only a little bit. I mean, occasionally when it's a nice day and he looks out the window and sees me sitting out there reading a book or something. But uh, he he's younger than me. So and he still works from home, which he enjoys. So that makes a difference, being able to work yeah. from home and not having to fight traffic and all the things that that, that entails. I hope right. that businesses are letting more people just stay working working at home because there are a lot of advantages. I mean, there's some disadvantages. You don't get the socialization that you get yeah. when you work in an office, but you can do that once a week, once or twice a week, right? And and spend a lot right. of time. And think of all the pollution that's not going into the air from all the cars sitting in traffic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. So it's, it's working out well. Um, what else have I been doing? Well, one of my retirement pillars is lifelong learning. So I took a CPR uh, and first aid class. Um, so now I'm, I'm certified in, in CPR and adult and child first aid. So that was a really good thing to do. Part of the class was online, and then there was an hour and a half in-person training. It was put on through the American Red Cross. And I was the only person in the class who was taking it simply because I thought it was a good thing for people to learn versus most of the people in the class were there because they had to get a certification Professional. for their job. Yeah. We have our... um Fire department here where I live provides free CPR classes, but you don't get the certification. Oh, so, well, that's good though. Yeah. So you go in and, and like, like where I live, the neighborhoods will host it. So they'll have like 50 or a hundred people go in and they'll train them all, but we don't get the certification, but we get the information, which is great. Yeah. Oh, and on. you get to practice on the dolls. So yeah, I wonder if they have something like that where you live. Yeah, I I don't know. I know that, yeah, there are quite a few through the Red Cross. Uh, I also started taking a pickleball class. I know you had somebody on the show one time talking about the pickleball craze. I've only taken two classes so far, but I, I really like it. It's it's a fun game. It's, it's interesting, the scoring. Uh, that takes a little bit of... Uh, practice for your brain to get used to how the scoring works. Uh, have you played pickleball? No, I haven't. I heard it's a very dangerous sport. So tell me about how the scoring works. Well, like when you score a point, then you have to, you're playing, when you're playing doubles, when you score a point, then you move to the other side and each team gets two chances to take a turn serving. So that, some of those things are just a little bit different than tennis or uh, ping pong. Um, okay. I, yeah, I understand the concern about the injuries because I have heard, especially because a lot of people over 50 are playing pickleball, there have been a ton of injuries and emergency rooms are seeing a lot of people coming in with pickleball injuries. I, I do know I need to buy some new shoes uh, because my shoes are geared more towards walking or running. And uh, I was told that with pickleball, if you play mostly on an outdoor court, you should have like tennis shoes. And if you play mostly indoor, you should have a like, basketball or volleyball type shoes. So where do you play, indoor or outdoor? I have played on uh, both because I signed up for a class and then I also signed up for like an open play thing at a gym. So. So you need two more sets of shoes. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Well, keep us posted about your pickleball escapades and hopefully you won't get hurt. I think people get hurt because they think they're in better shape than they are or they think they can do things that they can't. And they wind up reaching for something they shouldn't or stepping back when they shouldn't or doing something. But yes, I know of a lot of people that have been injured playing pickleball. So yeah. 
So yeah, just don't go crazy t- trying to go after a shot. It just, it's only a point. Let it go. Right. <laughs> right. Don't get injured. I, yeah. I went also this summer on a trip to Dallas. It was a very hot time of year to, to go to Dallas. Um, but I had my sister's, uh, stepdaughter has uh, two young children. So I have two uh, grand nieces. And uh, so I don't get a chance to see them very often. One of them is not quite two yet. And I'd only seen her once when she was a baby. So it was really wonderful to go and spend time with them. And also since it was kind of between daycare time and when school started, I was able to help out and, and babysit the girls a little bit. And, uh, we just, we had a lot of, a lot of fun. We were swimming in my sister's pool. And I think I've told you that I have a a fabric mermaid tail and I like to swim. Yes. I'm so jealous. Did they love it? Did the kids love it? Yeah, they did. And, and, uh, the older one, uh, put on the mermaid tail and swam around. Yeah. She, the older one actually has autism and it was so wonderful to see how well she is doing. She got that early intervention that is so important and she's just really doing well. And it was just great to, to see that. And, uh, so it was, it was a nice, nice trip and I, family is, is really important. And I, I, it's kind of hard when uh, both my sisters live uh, far away. I need to just make the effort to, to go and, and visit more often and, and spend more time. It's important. And now you can because yeah. now you have the time. So it's, right. it's perfect. Yes. Yeah. I'm glad you got to do that. Did you take any pictures? Did, any any pictures of you as a mermaid swimming around with your mermaid uh, nieces? Oh, I think I just have one of of her in the tail, actually. <laughs> not, How not fun, though. Yeah. Yeah, it was Still great. Fun. Yeah. And then my sister and I also saw the Barbie movie while I was out there. And oh. that was that was fun. Uh, thinking about, you know, I used to play with Barbie when I was a little girl. I'm I'm of that age when Barbie was still kind of a new and exciting thing at the time. And I especially liked the the weird Barbie that they had in, in the movie. She was the one that the kids played with a little bit too hard. And Oh, I, think- I'm, I haven't seen the movie, <laughs> so I guess I'm going to have to see it now. The weird Barbie. Okay. To yeah. figure that one out. Yeah. Did you play with Barbies when you were a kid? So when I was a kid, we were poor. And I never got a real Barbie. I got the fake Barbies that you knew weren't real Barbies. Oh. And so when I was in my 20s, I started collecting Barbies. And just because I don't do it anymore and I've given a lot of them away. But um, but yeah, so I've never really played with real Barbies because the Barbies that I bought were expensive. And um but yes, I, I missed out. I wanted to. I was Barbie envious of all my friends that had real Barbies. And and I was so upset when they I would see that they destroyed their Barbies. They cut their hair off and painted their face green and all that's those a, things. That's a weird Barbie. Oh, <laughs> so that's a Barbie that they painted the face green and all the things. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yes, but <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to go see the movie. Yeah. Or I'll wait till it, it comes out. It's a great movie. It really is. And it's, it's very uh, uplifting for women because really before Barbie came out, women could only like little girls could only play with baby dolls and, uh, you know, think about growing up to be a mommy or a nurse. But with Barbie came the ability to be anything, a a doctor, do whatever you want. Yeah. can drive a car. (laughs) All kinds of things. Well, that sounds like fun. What else did you do? We walked a lot early in the morning in Dallas. Um, Oh, yeah, it's hot. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and we went out for lunch and for drinks with some friends of my sister's. We ate some good Mexican food and tacos and things like that. So yeah, it was a it was a nice nice trip. Also this summer, my husband and I have taken some weekend getaways to 
Michigan and to Wisconsin. We have another trip coming up to Michigan soon for his grad school uh, reunion. So that'll be fun. We'll get to go to a, a football game up there. But in the summertime, I think people don't really think about beaches in the Midwest, but I'll tell you the beaches in Michigan and Wisconsin are awesome. This one we went to in Milwaukee even had a tiki bar. What? And yeah. And you would look at a picture of it and you would think that that's in the Caribbean. That's not in Milwaukee. So I'll do a little plug for Michigan and Wisconsin tourism and say, you know, it's the place to be during during the summer there. And swimming in Lake Michigan, you don't have to worry about jellyfish or sharks. And, and it's it's not how hot is it there? Because it's really hot where I live in the summer. How hot is it in Michigan? It's beautiful still hot actually oh it's not no, hot. no i mean now it's 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 becoming cooler more like fall weather but even like in the heat of the summer it it can get up into the 90s or 100 at a time but the water in lake michigan never gets too warm it's that's, that's nice like, it's always refreshing to jump into the lake huh. so i, I maybe we'll have to check it out the lake yeah and there's some like beautiful dunes in Michigan too, and some wineries. Um, I I think it's a good place to go for a little vacation. Huh. Well, thanks for the hot tip. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And lastly, I guess I've also started recently doing a little bit of volunteer work at a food pantry. Um, you know, hunger is, is a big issue and it just spending a little time to sort items in the pantry or distribute food to neighbors in need is, is a rewarding and purposeful thing to do. And I find it, it, it works well for me because I don't have to lock myself into a, a particular schedule. I can just receive the emails from the volunteer coordinator about what shifts they need extra help with and then sign up kind of as time permits. It's so, an ad hoc kind of thing. That's yeah, great. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's definitely lots of volunteer opportunities that you can take advantage of as a retiree. Where and you don't have to do a long-term commitment. I, you know, right. I didn't even think of that. That's a, I'm going to have to check that out because that's one of the reasons why I don't have any, I mean, I volunteer for clubs and stuff here, but I'm not going outside our gates to do things. But food pantry would be good if I can just do it when I'm available and not lock myself into a two-year commitment, right? Right. They just post a, a, a schedule on their website or send out a weekly email with, you know, these, this is where we need help. And then you can sign up kind of as you feel like it. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're really, you're really rocking your retirement right now, Betsy. Yeah, I, I think I am. My first summer has been great and uh, just looking forward to what's next. Well, I can't wait to our till our next uh, update. Thank you so much for coming on the Rocky Retirement Show again. Sure. Great. And for the listeners, thank you for listening. And we will give you our next update on the next show. And we'll see you next time on the Rock Your Retirement Show. Bye. 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 